This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on mass moment of inertia. It's from chapter 17.1 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to determine the mass moment of inertia of a rigid body or a system of rigid bodies. Activities include some applications. We'll cover the mass moment of inertia, the parallel axis theorem, composite bodies, and then we'll do some problem solving. So the large flywheel you see here is connected to a large metal cutter. The flywheel mass is used to help provide a uniform motion to the cutting blade. What property of the flywheel is most important for this use? How can we determine a value for this property? Why is a lot of the mass located near the flywheel's circumference? The crank you see here on this oil rig undergoes rotation about a fixed axis here. Uh, the crank develops a kinetic energy directly related to the mass moment of inertia. As the crank rotates, its kinetic energy is converted to potential energy and vice versa. So consider this rigid body shown in blue. It has a center of mass at point G and it is free to rotate about the z-axis which passes through G. Now if we apply a torque T about the z-axis to the body, the body begins to rotate with an angular acceleration of alpha. And as we'll see in section 17.2, this torque is equal to the mass moment of inertia times alpha. So I is the mass moment of inertia. Sometimes you see it written like that. The mass moment of inertia of a body is a property that measures the resistance of a body to angular acceleration. We use this most often when analyzing rotational motion. So consider this rigid body shown in blue and the arbitrary axis P. Uh, the mass moment of inertia about the P axis is defined as I is equal to the integral of R squared dm where M is mass and R is the distance from the axis to the differential element dm. The mass moment of inertia is always a positive quantity and it has units of kilogram meter squared or slug foot squared. The two figures you see here are a thin circular disc and a thin plate. These are shapes commonly used when working with three-dimensional bodies. These shapes are often used as the differential element being integrated over an entire body. And here you can see the formulas for the mass moment of inertia about these various axes for these two common shapes. The inside back cover of the Hipper text has a mass moment of inertia for a number of shapes. Let's establish a procedure for analysis. When using direct integration, only symmetric bodies having surfaces generated by revolving a curve about an axis will be considered here. So if you have a shell element, uh, this shell element is shown in gray here. Uh, it has a height z, a radius r, which is also equal to the y, and the thickness dy is chosen for integration. Then the volume element, dv, is 2 pi y, which is the circumference of the circle about the z-axis of radius y times the height z times dy. This element may be used to find the moment of inertia i sub z since the entire element due to its thinness lies at the same perpendicular distance y from the z-axis. You can also use a disk element. Uh, this has a radius y and a thickness dz, you can see here then the volume of that is pi y squared, which is the area shown here, times the height dz. So using the moment of inertia of the disk element, we can integrate to determine the moment of inertia over the entire body. This will become more clear. We'll do some examples later and you'll see how this is used. So now we'll discuss the parallel axis theorem. Here you see a rigid body in blue and the mass center is denoted by the point g and the axes x prime, y prime, z prime pass through the center of gravity. Now let's say I want to know the moment of inertia about the z-axis. The derivation is shown in the book, but the moment of inertia about the z-axis is going to be equal to the moment of inertia about the center of gravity in the z-direction plus the mass times distance squared. Now d is the perpendicular distance between the parallel axis z prime and z. 
So this is a way to transfer the moment of inertia from a known axis to an unknown axis. Remember, the axes have to be parallel to each other for this to work. Now we'll define the radius of gyration. Uh, the mass moment of inertia of a body about a specific axis can be defined using the radius of gyration, which we denote as k. The radius of gyration has units of length and is a measure of the distribution of the body's mass about the axis at which the moment of inertia is defined. So the moment of inertia is equal to mass times the radius of gyration squared. So the radius of gyration is the square root of the mass moment of inertia divided by mass. So let's consider composite bodies. Here we see a rod and a sphere and they are um, joined together to form this pendulum. If a body is constructed of a number of simple shapes, the mass moment of inertia of the body about any axis can be determined by algebraically summing together all the mass moments of inertia found about the same axis of the different shapes. So in this case I can say that the mass moment of inertia of the pendulum about point O is the mass moment of inertia of this rod about point O plus the mass moment of inertia of the sphere about point O. And a number of times you'll need to find where the mass center is for this composite body and the way to do that is we'll assume the mass center of the composite body is located some distance y bar from some datum. In this case I'll choose the uh, fixed axis of rotation O. So I can say that the total mass of the pendulum times y bar is equal to the sum over i of all the individual composite bodies times their distance from point O. So example one, the volume shown has a density of five slugs per cubic foot. Find the mass moment of inertia of this body about the y-axis and note that the, the shape is defined by y squared is equal to x. Plan is to find the mass moment of inertia of a disk element about the y-axis and then integrate that. Okay, so we're going to solve this problem by using this disk element that you see shown in gray here. Now the moment of inertia of a disk is equal to one half mr squared. You can find that in the inside back cover of the book. And I can write this as a differential equation. di about the axis y is equal to one half dm r squared. Now in our case, r is equal to x, so I can write this as one half dm x squared. Now the differential mass element dm is equal to the density times an elemental volume element. So the volume of that little disk, as you see in gray, is equal to the area of its surface, which is pi x squared, times its height, dy. So I can substitute this into here and write that diy is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 foot, right, of rho pi x to the fourth over 2 times dy. Well, I also know that this curve here, y squared, is equal to x. So x to the fourth power is also equal to y to the eighth power. So this equals the integral from 0 to 1 of rho pi y to the eighth power over 2 dy. So this is equal to rho pi over 2 times y to the ninth power over 9. You've got away between 0 and 1 foot. And this equals to 5 pi over 18 slug foot squared. That's 0 0.873 slug foot squared. Now we have a composite body. This pendulum consists of a slender rod which has a mass of 10 kilograms and a sphere with a mass of 15 kilograms. Find the pendulum's mass moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to the screen and pass it through this fixed point O. So our plan is to follow steps similar to finding the moment of inertia for a composite area as you did in statics. So we have this composite body consisting of a rod. Its center of gravity is, of course, halfway down the rod. And the sphere. And its center of gravity, of course, is at the center of the sphere. So let's recall that this has a mass of 10 kilograms and this has a mass of 15 kilograms. So of course the center of mass of the rod seen here is 225 millimeters from point O 
and the center mass of the sphere, G sub s, is located uh, 500 millimeters from point O. So I have to use the parallel axis theorem and the composite body theorem here. So the mass moment of inertia about point O is equal to the moment of inertia about the mass center plus the mass times the distance between the mass center and point O squared. So I about O of the rod. The mass moment of inertia of a rod is 1 12th times the mass times the length squared. You can find that in the inside back cover of the book. So it's 1 12th. The mass of the rod is 10 and its length is 0.45 meters squared. Plus, now I need to transfer the rod's moment of inertia from GR to point O. So it's times the mass times that distance between R, GR and O squared, which is 225, so 0.25, 225 squared. And that equals 0 0.675 kilogram meter squared. Now likewise for the sphere, I about O the sphere, uh, moment of inertia of a sphere about its center is 2 fifths times the mass times the radius squared. That's also on the inside back cover of the book. So 2 fifths times the mass, which is 15, times the radius, which is 0.1 squared. Now I'll transfer it over to point O. The mass of the sphere is 15, and the distance between this point G sub S and point O is 0.5 meters, so 0.5 squared. This equals 3.810 kilogram meter squared. So the moment of inertia about point O for this composite body is equal to the sum of those two. Which is 4.485 kilogram meter squared. Here we have another composite body. We have a pendulum which consists of a five kilogram plate and a three kilogram slender rod. Find the radius of gyration of the pendulum about an axis perpendicular to the screen and passing through this point G. Now G is the mass center for the composite body. So we'll determine the mass moment of inertia of the pendulum using the method of for composite bodies and then we'll determine the radius of gyration using the mass moment of inertia and the mass values. So we're going to separate the pendulum into a square plate denoted by P and the rod denoted by R. Well first let's find Y bar, the distance to the mass center of the composite body. So we can use our formula Y bar times the total mass is equal to the sum of all the individual masses times their distance. So let's recall the mass of this plate is 5 kilograms and the mass of this rod is 3 kilograms. So the total mass you see here is 3 plus 5 or 8 times Y bar is equal to the mass of the rod which is 3 kilograms times its distance from its mass center to the point O which is going to be half of 2 or 1 meter plus the mass of the plate is 5 kilograms and its distance to from its center of gravity seen here to the point O is 2 plus 0.25 so this would be times 2.25 so you can solve for y bar is equal to 1.781 meters. So you can go to the inside back cover of the book and find that the moment of inertia of the plate is equal to 1 12th times the mass times a squared plus b squared. Where a and b are you know, 0.5 and 1 in this case. And the mass moment of inertia of a rod is 1 12th the mass times the length squared. Now I'm looking for the total mass moment of inertia about the point G. So I can write that the moment of inertia of the plate about point G is equal to 1 12th. The mass of the plate is 5 kilograms and its dimensions are 0.5 squared plus 1 squared. Plus the mass of the plate times its distance to the point G. So from its mass center to the point G and this distance is 2.25 minus y bar. So times 2.25 minus y bar, which we found was 1.781 squared. And that equals 1.621 kilogram meter squared. Now I of the rod about point G 
is equal to the mass moment of inertia of the rod about its own center of gravity, which is 1 12th. The mass of the rod is 3, and its length is 2 meters squared. Plus, now I need the distance from this point, the mass center of the rod, to this point G. So I need this distance. And that's y bar minus 1. So this would be mass of rod 3 kilograms times y bar, which is 1.781 minus 1 squared. And this equals 2.83 kilogram meter squared. So the moment of inertia about the point G is equal to 1.621 plus 2.83 or 4.45 kilogram meter squared. Now I was asked to find the radius of gyration K and that's equal to the moment of inertia divided by M square root of. So this is equal to square root of 4.45 divided by the total mass which is 5 plus 3 or 8 kilograms. So this equals 0 0.746 meters. This concludes 17.1 mass moment of inertia. Next up chapter 17.2 through 17.3 planar kinetic equations of motion and translation.